Okay, welcome back to my PTSD and me. This is part four. Uh, there were three different segments that I've already done. Um, if you get a chance to watch them, I would encourage you to do it. Um, this one is specifically for, you know, my PTSD and me. What is my PTSD and what's actually who I am? So it's more like self-identification. Um, not that long ago, I was talking to a friend and I said, well, I really don't like crowds. That's why, you know, why I don't want to go to this certain situation, certain place. And she says, well, you know, it's not that I don't like crowds. I just don't like people. <laughs> and I thought to myself, hmm, let me think some more about this thing. So it caused me to start looking at the disease itself and what are triggers and what, I, what, what causes me to act certain ways and be irrational at times. And then what is just who I am? So earlier in one of the segments, I talked about whispering. And I don't like when people whisper. And I don't like that, right? But I've never liked it. Now, see, the whispering took place as part of the setup for my trauma. But I was raised that you shouldn't whisper. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, people who whisper, say whatever you're talking about out loud. Like, they, they, you know, my mom used to tell, say that don't whisper is not a nice thing to do, right? And so, so is that the disease? Well, maybe in some cases, but not all the time. You know, what is it that you just don't like? You know, and I, I had to learn that I didn't want my, if I don't want my disease to define me, then I can't make that to be the excuse for everything that, that I don't like. You know, well, I don't like it because I got PTSD. Well, no, I don't like, I don't like huge crowds. I don't always find them to be safe. But at the end of the day, um, I've been in huge crowds, you know, so that is different with the PTSD because I don't feel that they're safe all the time. I face my fear and I go in them. I go to them. I go, I'm in situations where I'm in big crowds and that, but what I've had to learn is to just to make a list of the things that are, are my disease related and the things that I don't like. And it, it's still taking me some time because I think for quite some time, the, the, the PTSD really defined who I was, meaning I wouldn't go to certain things. I wouldn't do certain things. I was, you know, all the, the things that the depression, the, you know, self-esteem and things like that. I believe about me and that, you know, that I was more overwhelming and more, it's, it's, so it kept me in the disease more so than trying to get out of it until I started believing the word of God, right? I got that part, but then, okay, now that for so long I did it because of this, what is really me and who I am as opposed to what is the disease? You know, um, everything is not disease related. So um, my encouragement for you, because once you start healing, right, you get to see who what you look like afterwards. Before you start the healing process, the disease got you. You know, it's kind of, it has you. It just keeps eating away at you until you treat it. So once you treat the wound, right, once you treat the wound, then you can start to see what you look like after the fact. And, you know, if you if treat it right, you should be in a better way, in a better place. So, you know, I can remember, you know, not just having a lot of guilt. And, and in other words, just being, you know, just no self-esteem at all. Whereas now, you know, my self-esteem at times might be attacked, but that's not me at this present moment. Um, and the way that I react to certain things could just be that I have a temper as opposed to it's PTSD related. Um, so what I simply want to share with you is that there are things that cause me to say it's because of the PTSD, but it may not have been. It might have just been, that's just who I am. You know what I mean? And it's making me take a deeper look at, and and be okay about it, you know? Um, 
if it's something that I know I need to do better at, like for example, having a temper, well then let me call that thing out there. Let me just say, I have a temper, you know? Um, and that's what the issue is. Not that, you know, my PTSD made me angry and this, that, and the other. No, sometimes I have, you know, my temper is, um, is it can be short. You know, no patience sometimes. Sometimes my patience level is that of a gnat, right? So I just want to encourage you really quickly to just think about when it comes to your PTSD, you know, what is it? Is it truly your disease that's causing you to do that? Or is it just who you are? If it's just who you are, own it and claim it and be okay about it. That's where I'm at. That's what I had to tell myself, like Maria, you know, not, not everything is PTSD related. So look at yourself in the mirror and, and say, who are you? Find out who are you and stick with it. You know, of course, you know, I expect growth, you know, so if my patience level is small, <laughs> I expect to, to get more patience down the road. I'm not praying for that because I tried that once before and the good Lord gave it to me and it was trouble. <laughs> oh, just a little humor there, but... Yeah, it was who you gave me some more, right? I was like, ooh, I got all type of circumstances that, that required patience. And uh, I grew from it, but it was tough. I just say that. But I just want I just want you to take the moment and then I don't want I want you to be encouraged not not only not to allow yourself to define you as PTSD, but not to allow someone else to do it. So in other words, no matter, it doesn't matter what the next person thinks. They're not going through what you're going through. They don't have the right to judge you, you know. So don't let the next person's judgment, okay, because that's not of God anyway. But don't let the next person's judgment, you know, create this, this thing like, hey, this is me. This is who I am. No, you, you have to look yourself in the mirror and speak affirmation over yourself. But you have to also identify who you really are because to some degree... I know for me, the PTSD had defined me so long, you know, because of all the things that I had went through because of it, that was who I had become. So, for example, let me be more detailed, not having a voice. So, because I didn't feel like I had a voice, if I get into your presence, I won't leave your presence until you hear me. And it went on for a long, long, long time. So much to the point that whereas now, if I'm quiet, something's wrong with me. That's usually what people think. <laughs> it's really, really who I am, more quieter than people realize. Because there's the conflict. Because then when they when I'm not around a lot of people, they don't understand it. Because I really don't I'm really kinda to myself. When I get in front of you, um, I'm still struggling to find that, to, get, to get past the fact that I need to be heard. I think I'm just about there, but that's part of the disease. You see what I mean? It's not so. Then people look at that and figure because I'm I'm finding my, they don't understand that I've had the my voice was lost in my opinion. I had no I couldn't say anything. I couldn't talk to nobody about it. So it was just something I had to hold on to and not tell anybody about, right? And because I didn't, I felt like my voice was taken away from me. Well, when I get in front of you, my point's going to be heard, and that's the way it is, and blah blah blah, right? <laughs> and so now you, own, I ain't gonna quit talking to you till I'm finished talking to you, and um, because now I'm in your presence, you know. And so, but that's not at the end of the day. I'm really a loner. Like I look, I like people, but I not like that. Like I would rather just be me, myself, and I on several occasions, you know, and I'm totally good with it. That's who I was prior to the trauma. But um, I lost my identity because of the trauma. So this whole thing to get to the point is for you to find your identity through the storm and don't let someone else define you and or the disease. And don't, so you, you know, don't do that. Just... You know, if, if I were to give you any advice, the things that work for me is the fact that I, um, I've decided that I need to determine and, and, and say, okay, who am I? 
what do I like? You know, who, who am I? What don't I like? And, and separate the two. Just separate the two. One is because of the disease, because the trauma that went with that disease. But something else I don't like has nothing to do with the disease. It's just that's who I am. I just don't like it. <laughs> it's got, you know, it's like not liking liver has nothing to do with the disease, right? I just don't like it. So uh, this last segment that's very short is just for you to, after you start, after you've exposed the wound, after you've tried to help, you know, use some sort of cognitive behavior therapy, I use the Word of God to help me through my self-talk, you know, um, after that, you know, and then letting people know what your triggers are, put it out there in the open so that you can work together as a team to, for your therapy and for your healing, you know, and then at the end of it all, after you've done all of that, that's why I left this last part for, I just kick off with like, who are you? Because you don't know if you've never exposed the wound, if you've never talked to anybody about your disease, if you've never felt comfortable to get it out there, if there's, for whatever reason, you have not sought any type of therapy, um, and so you're still carrying it, you might have suppressed it, but it's still there kind of thing, um, then this is why this is part four, not part one, two, or three. You have to get through all, I had to get through all of that first before I can see who I was, right? Because initially, I was just trying to figure out what was PTSD <laughs> and what was it that was, uh, what had gone on with me? Because for a long period of time, I had buried it. I had no idea I even had it. I didn't even know there was a disease called PTSD until the episode itself was relived right in the doctor's office. Couldn't figure out a better time to do it but that, right in front of somewhere where I needed some help. You know, that's how God works. And... Once I exposed it and was okay with it and got over the, excuse me, got, I had to get over the fear first of telling people about it, anybody, doctor, anybody, um, and feel okay with going through the process to be healed, to open that door. Once I did that, now wounds expo a wound exposed can be healed, right? Has the potential to be healed. But if it's just covered up, that's all it is, and it could cause deeper, deeper issues. And that's what happened when I suppressed everything. I just, it was just more issues that came as a result of that. The depression, the suicide thoughts, you know, the self, low self-esteem, the lack of sleep, you know, weight gain, a whole lot of stuff that just adds to it because stress and high blood pressure, all that stuff runs together. So health issues, you know, um, as a result of it. And, you know, and then being defined, no voice, you know, just creating this other person to, to, to compensate for what I had lost, overcompensate for what I felt I had lost that I didn't have any control over, so a violation of some sort, right? So once once I had learned how to, to, to get, it's okay to get some help for this. You know what? Get some help for this. Then it was like, all right, well, now that I have, I need to be able to, to help myself when I'm not in front of the doctor. I need to do the work. I need to work on this daily. Like, I need to work on this in the moment at times. So what do I use and what do I believe? And that's where the Word of God came in. And then from there, it was, you know what, now that I'm okay with doing this and I, I, and I feel strongly about how I'm coming along, I can tell somebody else, but it took some, it was a process. So this is a process. So once you, once I got through that process, that, that portion of it, here I am today with who am I? 53 years old and all that I've accomplished in life, but really who am I? And what is PTSD and what is me? So that's where I am today. And, you know, you may be in one of the four areas. You could be that person who's just discovering th that I have PTSD based on that definition. I've been through something traumatic, and I've never had anybody to talk to about it, and no one cared. And so I really want to be able to talk to someone. And if you're interested in that, you know, I have a, a psychologist. If you're local here, in, in, and I live in Delaware, if you're local, then I have someone that you can talk to. If um, you're not, I would suggest, you know, um, um, finding a nice psychologist in your area. You know, do some research for them. Um, but, 
cognitive behavior therapy is just one of the things that I do, but it's basically many things that you can use, but it's, it's really just what do you believe, right? What do you believe? And based on what you believe, if you have factual evidence to back it up, then that's what it is. It's a fact. If it's not, if there's anything that can refute that truth, and that's the, then, then it's not true. And that's the kind of ther therapy that I've used right along with the Word of God. So if someone says, Maria, you, you're, you're a loser, you know, you're a quack or you're something wrong with you, I said, no, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. <laughs> and I believe that, right? Um, you know, you can't do anything. You, you know, you stink at this. You don't know anything. You're crazy, Maria. No, I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. So that's my, that's my therapy. And then, you know, I've come to a place where if people want to be in my circle and they want to understand me and they really do love me, then I need to tell them I owe it to them to tell them what's going on with me so they can help me. And if they really want to be around me, they will, they will help me. So when I figured that out, then I, then I, then I, I shared the things that go on with me and what I'm thinking and they received it. So if you're that person that knows somebody that has it, all they want is for you to receive them. That's it. <laughs> You know, listen to them. Don't treat them like they're a jerk or treat them like they're, you know, like they're handicapped or not. We, we just, we just, we have just never been able to reconcile the trauma that went on in our lives. And we weren't heard. We were violated. And, and because we didn't know what to do with that trauma, it caused other issues. That's it. Let's make us nothing else other than that. You know, that's the facts. So, we just want you to recognize it and be on and help us. You know, that's what we want. So that's where I'm at. That's what, that was part three. And part four is, okay, now that you've gone through all this, who are you? <laughs> are you PTSD or are you whatever your name is? You know, and I feel like I'm whoever God created me to be. I'm close. I'm just, and each day I'm striving to be more and more like that person. Right. And I've had to go through these things that I'm still going through in order to be the best me that God created me to be. That's who I am. Not, not, am I totally arrived? Absolutely not. It takes work. But define yourself. Don't let the PTSD define me. That's what I had to tell myself. And don't let others define me through that disease either. So thank you so much for, for, for watching. I pray, I pray that this is some help to somebody. Um, this is why I did it, you know. I, I just figured, let me just put it on my little camera on the phone, uh, stick the, and upload these vo these videos to YouTube and, and and share it with as many people as I can. And you know, um, I'm, you know, initially I'm just sharing it with the folks that are within my church and my friends and that, so they can share it with someone else. So that way, if they need to get to me, they can. Um, you just go to a person that shared a video with you in regards to, you know, if you want to talk about some things, I'll perhaps open up. A, it depends on, you know, um, the type of feedback that I get. I may open up an additional forum, you know, but all this was was just information. And I wanted to end with just saying, you know, I believe that, you know, God wants us all to be free from things, you know. Um, I believe that because that's what his word says. I believe that his son died for us so that we might live. And so I'm going to pray a special prayer over you all and uh, and end uh, segment four with that. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you for um, just allowing me to see another day. And I thank you, God, that, you know, your word never comes back void. I thank you that there, um, that you have placed on my heart to just encourage people to um, seek help and advice, you know, to be healed from this disease and to use your word, God. I thank you that this was, that is very helpful to, uh, to use your word to help us through different things, just to see how much you really do love us and care for us. And I thank you, God, that, you know, we don't have to be um, victims of our disease for our entire life, that we can overcome these things. And I thank you for helping us to do so for those that are willing. And I pray, God, that, um, that you know, what was on my heart and that you've allowed me to do and that the obedience will, will manifest itself in a way that's pleasing in your sight. I pray that some, some yokes will be 
you know, broken and, and bondage and all that will be destroyed. I pray, God, that, you know, you will you will work in, in the lives of those who suffer from this disease and other diseases and other things that, that people are trying to get over. And I just thank you that, you know, it is your will that we be healed. So I, I thank you, God, in advance for the manifestation of the healing that will take place from these videos and other help that's out there for us and and any anything else that we suffer from. In Jesus' name, I pray and give thanks. Amen. Well, thank you so much again for joining. Um, that's all I have. And you all have a blessed rest of the year.